everyone, it is lovely to have you with us today. I'm Jem from Webinar Experts and today I have been joined by two lovely people from the Adullam program, Kath and Sarah. And in this video, we'll find out more from the lovely ladies that know the charity the best. So Sarah and Kath, it's so lovely to have you with us today. Thank you for joining us. Um, so to start off with, could you tell us a little bit about um, yourselves um, and the work that you do at the Adorn Programme? So my name is Kath um, and I am a Programme Manager at the Adorn Programme. Um, I joined Adorn in 2017 uh, as a volunteer. And then um, in 2018, I was asked to step in um, part time as a program manager to help carry some of the workload. And the role has, has basically grown a lot since then. Yeah, my name's Sarah. I'm also a program manager. Um, Adullam's been going for, for quite some time. It's been on quite a journey. Um, and I guess I would, I would start to be involved um, in its beginning, which will be probably about 10 years ago now which is amazing really to think back. Um, so that role was like volunteer support um, in all kinds of, of um, capacities, I guess. And then I started working for the charity in August 2020 as the work um, started to, to really grow and increase and, and, and start reaching out within the Lancaster community. Really people who come to us um, come with any of life's struggles. And, and the people that come to us come with, with various kind of backgrounds. Our heart is to help anybody who needs support, but obviously that, that is a big subject. So that covers things like mental health issues, but the mental health issues are often caused as, as a result of a reason. So the reasons can be very varied. So it could be divorce, it could be bereavement, um, it could be childhood trauma, it could be domestic violence, um, it could be eating disorders, it could be that those things have then led to addiction. Um, we've taken people um, uh, from, from prison before today, we've worked in the prison in, in the past. We're not doing that at the moment. But So the reasons that people do come to us are extremely varied. Um, equally, we have people in the community who are isolated, lonely. Um, so it is quite far reaching what we do. Our um, one, one of the courses that we run, the, the sort of um, strap line is any of life's hurts, habits or hang-ups and I think that kind of sums it up quite well. I guess there's different strands to what we do. Um, we have a residential house um, where we can take three residents. Um, we partner with rehabilitation units in the city um, and take guys leaving rehab um, into a second stage of supported um, living. Um, and the, the reason for that is to give them time to think and look at their qualities. Um, rather than having to knee jerk into the pressure of everyday living without kind of being able to take forward the, the lessons that they've learned in rehab really. So it just gives them that space and time to, to think about their futures, understand their worth um, and what and what their future could look like, um, which obviously we want to be really positive and uh, for them to go on and, and realise their ambition really. Yeah, so we do run a number of different courses for people in the community um, and depending really on, on you know what people want to get from us because everybody is unique and their journey is unique and um, you know we can we can provide them with some social activities where they can come along have a chat make friendships start to build a community around themselves and um, we have other um, courses where we have a retired uh, GP who comes and runs a weekly walk um, and can chat with people about health issues um, you know which which is very popular um, and then we run a number of other key courses such as Living Life to the Full which is a course that particularly focuses on um, people's mental health and then we have a trainer who comes in and delivers a purpose workshop once a term that's to help uh, participants look at their strengths their skills and you know how they might develop a purpose for themselves in life you know and and whether that's to go on and volunteer somewhere whether that's to go out and get a job um, you know that that will look different for everybody but it, it's to give them the confidence that they are a valued member of society and they have something they can give 
Well, we both have lived experience of either dealing with personally or supporting family members with uh, life struggles. So we really feel it's important for anybody who is struggling um, not to have to go through this on their own, you know, and, and so we want them to recognise that there is support and if needed, a second chance, you know, to, um, you know, regardless of their situation or their background, you know, we all, we all from time to time need a reset, don't we? And, and so it's, um, you know, it's, it's our heart that anybody should have the help when they need it and not have to wait for that, but they can get plugged in at any point. Um, you know, and we love it, don't we? As we see people just growing in confidence, it doesn't matter the size of the step, we're just delighted when we see people making progress. Yeah. We're funded um, from a variety of sources, really. Um, charitable grants is one, um, but we also get quite a lot of direct support from individuals, um, organisations, and we, we host fundraising events too. That was tricky during COVID, but um, you know, since COVID kind of um, finished, we, we're doing more presentations. I'm doing one tonight actually in Morecambe. Um, but we go around various organisations telling people about what we do, and and it's it's amazing actually the generosity that that, that comes as a result of those. Um, but obviously, without an income, we can't function. In terms of, of seeing lives changed, you said before about somebody's smile, and I think some of the subtle stuff like self-confidence and low self-esteem, it can seem like nothing, but actually the huge steps, if somebody starts getting out of the house and actually becoming a part of a community and that sense of belonging and growing in confidence, it can seem really subtle, but it's not. It's huge for their lives. But then there's the other bigger stuff. Um, so for example, we've seen people reunited with families, um, you know, and families be rebuilt. Um, you know, dads be reunited with the kids, um, which is which is amazing. Um, we've seen people start their own business. Um, you know, come to us, you know, without a job, without a future, um, and actually be at the point where they've got so much work they don't know what to do, <laughs> which is amazing. Others, again, more, more subtle, can be just meeting people for coffee. Um, on our way up here this morning, um, we met one one of our participants who was just on her way to meet a group from, from a Dulham. Um, for a brew and so even though we're not meeting up at the moment or instigating that they are which again is quite far-reaching when you start to break it down and think about people who, are, who have maybe experienced loneliness lack of confidence and, and lack of self-esteem to see that to see them actually instigating that and taking the lead on that is uh, is great so it, it's very varied thank you so much Kath and Sarah for your time today it's been so lovely to have you here with us and thank you as well for watching today. It's been lovely to have you with us and finding out more about the Adorn program. If you would like to uh, donate and support us um, during the crazy races, then please scan the QR code that is appearing on screen now for you. Um, and there you'll be able to access the donation page. If you can donate, it is greatly appreciated. So please do if you can. We look forward to seeing you soon.